You know, every morning on the morning news, I watch the weather report. And really, when the weatherman comes on, he has all his fancy screens, and he's talking really fast, and he uses his hands. Um, he's predicting the weather. He's telling me what he thinks, based on some data he has, what the weather's going to be for the day. Well, you know, my grandmother also predicts the weather. Well, she doesn't have all the fancy computers and all the other fancy stuff that uh, Jeff Gianola or some of the other weathermen that I know have. Instead, what she has is her knees. She has an arthritic, arthritis in her knee, and during when it starts to be a storm, her knee hurts. And so she like, will tell us, hey, there's going to be a storm, based upon how her arthritis feels. But really, what her arthritis is feeling is air pressure and changes in air masses. And in this video, we're going to look at air masses, and in particular, air fronts, weather fronts, that are able to predict what weather are going to be like. And after this video, you should be able to predict basic weather patterns for your area based on understanding of air masses and of our other weather stuff, other weather facts. So, in this video, we're going to be doing three things. We're going to define and categorize what air masses are. What exactly is this thing called an air mass? We're going to describe the four major types of fronts and what is a front. Uh, and then lastly, we're going to predict the type of weather based upon what type of front we're going to see. So we're going to use our knowledge of air pressure, temperature, humidity, the big three, and we're going to use it to predict the type of weather that we're going to see based on a front. So let's quickly go back and review what we've learned about weather so far. We quickly saw that air temperature is one of our big three when it comes to weather. That is air temperature, air pressure, and relative or humidity, the amount of water in the air. And air temperature is largely driven by where you are on the Earth. If you're on the equator, the sunlight hits you much more directly and so that you get warmer air. And up at the poles, the sunlight hits at an angle and you get colder areas. So depending on where you are, you get more temperature. The difference in temperature creates convection and the cycle around our planet. Those convection are what creates winds and you might experience on a windy day. The cold areas, the air is moving down and we have higher pressure, and in the warmer areas, the air is moving away from us and we're getting low pressure. That's the rising and falling. At the warmer areas where the air is moving away from the earth, it also evaporates water, and that water creates humidity. And the humidity in the air eventually will hit what's called the dew point, that's the temperature when it becomes a liquid again, and will fall back, either will form a cloud and eventually become precipitation that we talked about, those really are the big concepts of weather, the big three as I call them in class. But an air mass, if we, will, if we looked at the atmosphere, you see there's a lot to it, and it'd be really hard to understand the atmosphere if we just looked at the entire thing. So instead we like to divide it down into groups that are a lot alike. So for instance, we would call those air masses. An air mass is a large amount of air that has a similar pressure, temperature, and moisture. You can think of it like a class. Uh, in my class, in, for sixth grade, right? In sixth grade, you all have a similar age, right? Well, an air mass, they have a similar pressure, temperature, and moisture. The weather does. The air does. And really, when we describe an air mass, we can do it by looking at categories, right? And so we have four different categories, and depending upon which one they fit, you can tell a lot about the air mass. The first thing is we can look at where that air mass was formed. Was it formed over the water? If that's the case, it's going to be really wet, and we call it a maritime air mass. That is a wet that was formed either over an ocean or a giant lake. Is it dry? Well, if it's a dry air mass, we call that a continental air mass because it's dry, formed over land. So we either can have a maritime air mass or a continental air mass. Well, then you can have whether where on the Earth was it formed. Was it formed in a polar area? Well, that would be cold. So a polar air mass would be cold. Whereas if it formed closer to the equator, that would be a warmer air mass, and we'd call it tropical. So we have four categories. You can have a maritime, which is wet, a continental, which is dry, a polar, which is down by the poles or down by the poles, and a tropical, which is from more warmer from the equator. We could put them together. So, you could have a maritime polar. That would be a wet and cold air mass. You could have a maritime tropical. That would be a warm and wet air mass. 
You could have a continental polar, right? A dry, uh, cold air, air mass, right? Or even a continental tropical, which would be a dry, warm air mass. So there's our four. It's just a combination of those two categories. So, all around our planet, we have different air masses moving around. Coriolis effect is shoving them around. And eventually, there's going to be spaces in between them. We call this the spaces or boundaries in between two different air masses a front. And you can see them on the weather reports. They usually have a line and they either have little triangles or little half circles. And that's telling you it's a front, a boundary between two air masses. These areas are pretty cloudy and that's usually where the storms are going to be found. So, when we look at them, when you look at it, you want to, when you look at a weather report, you want to find where that front is. And to depend upon what's happening, the different type of front, we can predict a different type of weather. And this is where your weatherman or weather woman are making their predictions. They're looking at the types of fronts. So, we have four different types of fronts. The first one could be what's called a cold front. And a cold front, cold and a cold air mass is moving in to an area where there's a warm air mass. So we got warm and the cold is moving in. Well, when that warm air is hit by the cold air, it's forced up. And when it does that, it cools down and can create heavy rain and snow. In the summer, that actually would make a thunderstorm. So a cold front is a storm front, really. So when cold air is moving in next to warm air, that front is a storm front or a cold front. So think lots of storms. We also could have the opposite. We could have a cold air mass and a warm front moving in. When that happens, this warm air is much moving in usually much more slowly and can basically cause drizzle. It's usually not that bad of a front. You can think of it here in Oregon as a gray, rainy day. So cold front storms, warm front, and eh, drizzly. Then there's something called an occluded front. An occluded front is no, when a fast-moving cold air moves in very quick into an area where there's warm air. Because it's moving in so quick, it forces the warm air up really quick. And when that happens, you get a large amount of rain. This is where precipitation falls very quickly. And we get a huge rainstorm here in Oregon or wherever we're watching the video. So, we've had cold, warm, occluded, and lastly is stationary. And of all the fronts, this is the most boring. This is where a cold air and a warm air mass, they meet, and they just sit there. And nothing really happens. You might get some drizzle, kind of like in a warm front, but other than that, it's just kind of boring. So there's our four types. And knowing where and what type of air mass is moving in and what was there before, you can predict what type of weather you're going to see. So let's look here in Oregon. Here in Oregon, we're right next to the Pacific Ocean. We have the winds from the east that are going to pick up the water and carry it over. So we're going to see a large amount of maritime air masses. Remember, we looked at that a second. Now, sometimes they're going to be tropical. Sometimes they're going to be polar. It all depends upon the jet stream, that high level of wind that's going to force air masses around our planet. If the air mass is from Alaska, the Gulf of Alaska, pushed down by the jet stream, it's going to be a polar air mass, and we're going to get cold, wet area, wet rain, or snow. If it's from south, maybe Hawaii off of California, it's going to be a tropical air mass, and we're going to get a warm, wet storm. But either way, we're going to get a lot of water, and that's why here in Oregon, at least on the west side, we're known as a pretty wet state. It's all about where a maritime air mass is coming in. Alright, so in this video we did three things. We defined and categorized different air masses. We said that there was a maritime polar, a maritime tr uh, tropical, a polar, uh, continental polar, and a continental tropical. And that we can tell by where they're formed and what the temperature is to figure out what an air mass is, what the type of air mass. And that's just a large category of water, of air. We looked at the four types of fronts, that the boundary between two air masses is called a front. And you could have a cold front, which is going to be a lot of storms and thunderstorms and rain events. You could have a warm front, which is going to be a drizzle. You can have an occluded front, which is going to be a heavy rainstorm right when it happens. Or you can have a stationary front, which is pretty much boring. And lastly, we predicted the type of weather based upon changing fronts. We were able to figure out what could you expect by which front's moving in by how fast. And here in Oregon, we can see that we get a lot of rain because of the air masses that are going to come in off our coast. 
So let me remind you how these videos work. You can always hit pause and go back and watch a section again or uh, take a break and come back later or just watch the whole thing over again. But regardless, always remember to keep moving forward.